We love your first comic tonight. His debut special is coming out on YouTube November 9th called Smoldering in town all the way from New York City. We are so excited to have him. Start clapping right now for Tommy McNamara, everybody. Give me all for Joe, everybody. All right. It's a very exciting time in America. Uh, I'm here. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I grew up in Chicago. I moved to New York to uh, pursue my dream of moving back to Chicago someday. And, uh, I think I can pull it off. I think I have a shot. We'll see. I'm happy to be here. I, I don't think I look cool enough to live in New York. I realized that recently. I was, uh, this is a true story. I was walking down the street, and I walked right by this guy. He's talking on the phone. I'm in Brooklyn. I walk right by him. I hear him say into the phone, man, there are some goofy motherfuckers out tonight. <laughs> I was the only person on the street. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm goofy and I'm plural. That's good. <laughs> Here's what I hate. I hate, uh, I hate when someone tells me they saw someone that looks like me. It's never a hunk, you know? It's never a good thing. <laughs> this is a true story. I, I, I was on the train recently, and I get this text. I go, Tom, he goes, Tommy, I saw this guy that looked so much like you. I almost said hi to him. He sends me a picture. I open up the picture. It's just a picture of me uh, <laughs> on that train <laughs> 10 minutes earlier. You ever become the weird guy who looks like you? I was like, I'm just the poor man's version of myself at this point. <laughs> I've been getting bullied lately by, uh, by these Instagram ads. Anyone else having this experience? This Instagram, it's a bad app, you know? Here's a, they, get, they do these targeted ads. Here's a targeted ad I got from Instagram. Four words. These are those four words. Double chin research study. <laughs> Like, this is just cyberbullying. <laughs> what is going on? Double chin research study. They don't even want to sell me anything. They want to get me in the lab. <laughs> but I did it, and it was such a good study. And uh, <laughs> we honestly raised a bunch of money for the community. <laughs> we're going to march. I think we're going to do great. Here's another Instagram ad I've been getting. I used to get Instagram ads for dating apps all the time. Dating app, dating app, dating app. And then I think they just gave up on me because recently it went from dating app to just like, would you like to try an AI girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, Instagram, all right. I do want to be the first human man to sexually disappoint an AI, though. I, do <laughs> I want to be the guy who makes the AI be like, is that it? You know? <laughs> That's kind of my dream. Uh, I don't know what that robot voice was, but it's going to be offensive in 30 years. <laughs> I did. I re-downloaded uh, re uh, Bumble recently. I've never been a big dating app guy, but my, my friend met his wife on Bumble. And I, I didn't like dating apps. My friend met his wife on Bumble, and she's, like, beautiful and really cool, so I'm, like, hoping she's still on there. Uh, oh, come on. I'm not going to bang my friend's wife. <laughs> But who knows? Uh, <laughs> I had a breakup a couple months ago. I, had a, I realized my friends aren't good at like uh, comforting after a breakup. That's something I realized. I had a breakup in August, and this is what my friend said to make me feel better. My friend, he's all drunk. He puts his arm around me, and he just goes, well, football season's right around the corner. <laughs> Well, that was the dumbest thing in the world. Then, like, three weeks later, I was watching the Bears with a beer. Like, you know what? He was right. Uh, <laughs> this does replace love in many ways. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was watching a pornographic video recently. Uh, when you look like me, you have to say the whole word. Uh, <laughs> no, I found this website. It's like a hub for porn. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they do this stuff, but I was watching this video, and it was two people banging in a hotel room. And they had the TV on in the background. And uh, my eyes went straight to the TV. And I was like, what are they watching while they're, while they're having sex? You know? And uh, a normal sex between two. You know? And, uh, and I'm watching that. I look at the TV. And I realize that they are playing the movie The Mask is what's on. <laughs> and it made my whole day. I was so excited. It's the weirdest movie to have sex on with the background of all time. So I did something you should never do on Pornhub. I went straight to the comment section because I was like, I have to know if other people notice that the mask is playing. And let me tell you, every comment was about the mask. It, it was, it like lifted me up. Every comment was just like, man, I love Jim Carrey. Uh, <laughs> one of them just said, smoke it. <laughs> 
But the best comment, my favorite one by far, someone just wrote, get your titties out the way. I'm trying to watch The Mask. <laughs> I was like, that's an American hero, whoever wrote that. That's the coolest thing in the world. I started uh, shaving my head recently. I became a, I became a bald man. I'm saving like thousands at the barber. It's been good. I, uh, I might have been getting ripped off. But uh, this is something weird about becoming bald. I don't know if we have any bald guys in here. It's a, there's no day where everyone tells you, like, today's the day you're bald, you know? What happens is you, you decide to shave your head, and then everyone's like, oh, yeah, you should have done that three years ago. <laughs> That's more what happens, you know? But I had a friend tell me this. My friend goes, oh, it's cool. You got a great head shape. And that's not true. I was like, it's like maybe great in like the biblical, the Old Testament sense, you know? Like my head shape is great in that it's something that God hath wrought. <laughs> like that kind of like, you know? Like, um, but I'm happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> I've been going to the gym lately. I've been popping off at the gym. Uh, I just started going. You guys were probably like, this guy was born in the gym. No, I just started. Uh, I feel at home at the gym. They got this place that it says judgment-free zone. I go to Curves. And uh, it's been good. Here's a little game I like to play at the gym. I like to just imagine myself going up to the most jack guy there and be like, oh, my God, we're like body twins. We must do the same shit. <laughs> like, this is crazy. They play the local news at the gym I go to, which I think is weird. It's always like the local five news in New York. But I like to use it to inspire me. I like to pretend that I'm training to stop whatever's happening on the TV. <laughs> They'll be like, subway improvements could be costly to taxpayers. And I'll be like, not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> I'm going to kill a state senator, you know. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> my dream is to haunt the gym. That's what I've been thinking about. It's a spooky joke for a spooky time. I... Uh, <laughs> Here's what I want. I want to put on a full ghost outfit and just stand near the counter when someone's signing up and be like, don't do it. I used to be jacked before I came in here. All the machines are reversed. <laughs> just funny stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I, was on a, I was on a plane recently, and it was one of those small planes, you know, where you think you're going to die the whole time. And... <laughs> I'm sitting like way in the back with all the other CEOs. And if you want to know where the money is on a plane, it's 34D. That's where all the like ladies, if you're looking, those that's where the rich guys are hanging out. And uh, I'm in the back, and the flight attendant comes back. She says something I, I've never heard before. She goes, uh, hey, there's a weight imbalance on the plane, so someone from the back needs to move to the middle. And then she looked right at me. I was like, when did my life become a yo mama so fat joke. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> but I moved up, you know, I'm a good customer. So I move up and later she's giving me my uh, extra calorie soda and I ask her, I go, I gotta ask about the weight. Th did you ask me to move for the weight balance thing because I'm overweight? She goes, sir, oh my God, I'm so sorry you thought that. I asked you to move because you were the only one who was alone. <laughs> Like, oh, cool! It was sad for a different reason? I'm happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really trying to lose weight. I'm over that shit. Here's, here's what I'm trying to do. Have you ever watched a TV show and one of the actresses on that show is pregnant, but her character is not pregnant, so they have to hide her stomach all the time? I just want to do that in the world. <laughs> I was like, every time you see me, you're like, why is Tommy holding those grocery bags? I'm like, don't worry about it, brother. <laughs> Look at the hot people. It's all good, you know? I just eat like shit. Like, I go to this bar all the time that has uh, free hot dogs. That's kind of my vibe, you know? <laughs> A few months ago, I got back from that bar, and my ex was like, oh, how's the bar? I was like, it was sick. I had five hot dogs. <laughs> she just looks at me seriously and goes, oh, was there a contest? <laughs> I was having a good afternoon, but... Not good when you tell someone you're lunch and they're like, oh, did you get a t-shirt after that? <laughs> I feel like I just have the vibe of a guy who has crumbs on his shirt at all times. That's kind of my thing. And I say that because recently someone came up to me at a party and was like, I think you have crumbs on your shirt. And I was like, no, what the hell, yeah? Because I knew I hadn't eaten before the party. It was Ramadan. And I said, <laughs> that's a funny thing to say. And... Uh, <laughs> I go, no, I didn't eat before the party. He goes, oh, you know, it's probably beard dandruff. I was like, oh, good. I was worried I looked like a slob. 
Thankfully, it's only beard dandruff, the grossest thing I can possibly imagine. That makes me feel better. I, uh, I drank too much last year and the 15 before it. I was drinking too much during the pandemic. Here's how I realized that. I was drinking too much at home. You know, you had to drink at home. They told you on the news. Like, you gotta drink at home. I was like, all right, buddy. I was drinking too much at home. Here's, here's how I found that out. I, uh, I went to the gas station near my house one day. I was just buying ice cream. And I bring the ice cream up to the counter. And the guy at the counter goes, oh, no beer today. Well, that's not a good look. <laughs> you don't want to be a regular at the shell. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> just wagon past, walking past the gas pumps like, this is my cheers. Uh, I'm trying to get my shit together. I'm trying to get my, my friend was like, you got to get on health insurance. And I was like, brother, have you seen my phone? I haven't had a case on my phone in three years. I'm not going to get health insurance. That's like a case for the body. Uh, and if you're wondering, what does a phone look like after you don't have a case for three years? This is what that looks like. Uh, <laughs> this is a true story. So, yeah. Oh, shut up. Have fun. <laughs> I'm just going to do a couple more things. You guys are great. Uh, but yeah, I think they're really pushing non-alcoholic beer lately. I've noticed that. They're really pushing the non-alcoholic stuff. I think it's cool, but it's the weird the way they advertise it. There's a Heineken Zero commercial. Where it's just this guy is in an office building, shirt and tie. He's walking through the office with a Heineken can. And everyone's kind of gasping because he's got a beer at work. Then he flips it and shows it's a Heineken Zero. And everyone's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> like, that's normal. <laughs> that's the weirdest shit you could possibly do. <laughs> Drink a non-alcoholic beer at work? Are you out of your fucking mind? Soda exists. Seltzer's out there. Like, what are you doing? I was, uh, I think my craziest drinking time was in college. I'll tell a quick story, then I'll get out of here. Uh, when I was in college, I, I made a big mistake. I went to see a Boston-based white rapper in college. <laughs> I think those are the worst four words you could use to describe a human being. I went to a Boston-based white rapper, Sammy Adams, if anyone remembers Sammy. <laughs> yeah, we got one, one, one person who remembers Sammy. And, uh, Sammy Adams, I was in the front row, blackout drunk. I didn't know any of the songs. Having a great time. And uh, all of a sudden, during the show, he starts pouring liquor off the stage. And in my drunk mind, I got this idea. I was like, oh, I like drinking. And uh, I should drink that. So he's pouring it off the stage, and I get under it, and I start chugging, like, rah, 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 you know? And then everyone gets really mad at me. And I didn't know why. And my friend told me later that he had just said, I'm going to pour some out for my friend who died. <laughs> it's a 100% true story. <laughs> so he goes, I'm going to pour some out for my friend who died. And my drunk ass was like, no, you're not. <laughs> so sorry, buddy. <laughs> Folks, I've been Tommy McNamara. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everybody. Tommy McNamara, everybody. Let him hear it. <laughs> Tommy, that Sammy Adams story is the most deeply Irish story I've ever heard. So I was seeing a Boston rapper named Sammy Adams. That's, I'm sorry. I'm just having fun with that. One more time for Tommy McNamara, everybody. So funny. <laughs>